Welcome back to another Creative Campfire. Today, my friends, you're going to meet my friend, Amy Chaganese. Amy is one of our arts integration coaches, and she also shares a variety of strategies with our Teacher Accelerator members. And so today, you're gonna get to see how she uses watercolor. Now, if you don't have watercolor materials at home, that's okay. You can use some of these techniques with a variety of art forms, but we wanna share this with you today in case you have some watercolors at home and you wanna play with them a little bit. So, here's Amy. Watercolor is a great medium to use with all kinds of students, even for yourself. Uh, there are so many different techniques. So I'm going to show you a few here, and I'm going to fess up and let you know that the wet on dry that I'm demonstrating right now, uh, I kind of messed up because I added way too much water. So I'm just going to let this go, and you can see that it's all bleeding together, which was not my intent, uh, but I will fix that later, you'll see. So the wet on wet, I'm just wetting that little square first. Oh, got a little dry under the light. Um, and then I'm adding some different colors on top, and they bleed together beautifully. And I was pointing out that I did that on the other one by mistake. Anyway, the next is using salt. So I'm putting some color down first, and then actually sprinkling some kosher salt on the top. And you can see how the salt draws um, some of the paint to different places. It makes an interesting effect. We'll see when that's dry. So now, um, this is fun, wet watercolor drips on top. I couldn't really get it to drip, so if you just touch the tip to the paper, it looks like that. And here is a student work uh, that was done in my elementary classroom. All right, on to crayon resist. Now, I had already started some with these construction paper crayons. They're just a little bit uh, darker. You can use them on dark paper as well. And you can also use oil pastels and then simply paint a wash of watercolor on top. And ta-da, you can see your design underneath. White crayon is especially exciting with a dark color on top. Next, we're going to do a little bit of color mixing. So I'm putting a little bit of yellow, and I'm not letting it dry, and I'm putting the blue on the other side. And then I'm just going to not touch it and let it mix. Uh, next, so this is kind of fun. So you can use um, a permanent marker, And you can also use a water-based marker. So I'm doing the Sharpie or permanent-based, uh, alcohol-based marker first. And now a Mr. Sketch, which is a water base. And let's try painting on top and see what happens. You might even want students to do this as an experiment, and they can discover what happens. Next is splatter painting. Now all kids love to splatter paint. Oh my gosh, that's sometimes all they want to do. So I made a little mask for this demonstration. Um, you have to show the students how you do it in a controlled manner. Uh, if they're not shown how to do it in a controlled manner, they can get very excited um, and have very large movements and you'll have lots of kids with polka dots all over them. <laughs> So uh, controlled is best. I have also created a box for in my classroom so they could do it right inside a box and the splatters really don't go anywhere. Okay, the samples I've had a chance to dry. I'm going to rub the kosher salt off of this. You can also leave it on if you'd like for the texture. Uh, so now remember I said I messed up my wet on dry. So 
one neat thing about watercolor, another neat thing, is you can paint on top. You can have many layers. So I'm just putting some different dots on top of this dry painting to show you that you can do um, a lot more controlled work and how the dry paint or how the wet paint will look on the dry surface. And there you go. Eight different techniques you can use with watercolor with your students. <music>